Okay guys, here we have the Intellivision Collection 1 for the Evercade. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so in television collection one, we have 12 games included, which is kind of cool. I think there wasn't an awful lot of television games there, well, over about 150-ish, I think. Um, there's a lot of homebrew games as well, which interestingly we have a homebrew game on here. So we've got a selection, Night Stalker, Astro Smash, Thin Ice, Thunder Castle, Shark Shark, Princess Quest, which is the homebrew, Frog Bog, Snafu, Slap Shot, Super Pro Hockey, Pinball, Buzz Bombers and Word Rockets. So I didn't have an Intellivision um, growing up, we were more Atari 2600. And it's a nice sort of looking cart, pretty cool. Um, I don't really remember Intellivision to be honest, being in the UK massively, if at all. I'm, I'm sure it was, but I definitely don't remember it. So that's, uh, obviously it was a competitor to the Atari 2600. You could probably argue that some of the graphics actually look a lot nicer. So this is the actual manual, and, and it's really interesting, I've had a good read at it. Probably really important to sort of look at this manual and read, especially for the controls. Um, obviously the Intellivision had that strange controller with all the sort of number uh, on it, so it's, it's interesting to go see how um, Blaze have actually went about sort of integrating that controller into the games, because that's not easy. In some cases you need to sort of bring up an on-screen controller and access it that way, and I think they've, they've probably done it quite well. And this is really nice. I, I do like those these sort of manuals, and they're definitely worth reading. There's a lot of, sort of hidden information, there's a lot of information how to play the games. And some things, this is massively important, because some games are quite complicated. Some games are quite simple, you can just jump on and go. Yeah. I'm just having a quick brief look at how the games actually run. Um, we'll, we'll obviously look at them properly uh, on the VS. I think this game especially uh, works wonders on here, it plays brilliantly uh, on the handheld, it sounds really good. I'd say this is probably, I mean arguably this is probably the best game on here. I really do like this one. Oh, I'm going to die. Quite cool. Anyway, let's get this up onto the VS. Okay guys, let's have a look at the Intellivision collection. Um, I definitely like the, the art here and the original sort of box art which is really quite cool. It definitely looks nice here. But yeah, let's have a look at these games. They're all quite kind of simple games I guess. Um, but let's have a look at Astro Smash as the first one. Now, interesting the controls, this one's fairly straightforward but some of the controls you need to utilise the actual sort of on screen keyboard, which I'll go through as we're playing each of the games. Let's try Astro Smash Smash. So, Astro Smash first. Definitely like this game, one of my favourite games on here. Simple, it's just really destroy all the asteroids coming down to Earth. Um, if any of the asteroids hit the Earth, it comes off your points. So, this could be definitely one of those that's perfect for high score battles, I think. You can see this being a, a future high score battle on the, the Evercade unofficial fans group on Facebook. If you don't follow that guys I'll leave you a link in the description. Great little group. I think this is definitely a high score challenge for next year or um, maybe later in the year when it finally releases. So you got four sort of um, spaceships, I guess they're a spaceship, some kind of spaceshipy thing. And you're just really protecting your Earth here. It's brilliant, absolutely love it. Obviously there are special sort of ships that fall down that you need to make sure you destroy or you will die instantly as soon as it hits the Earth. Uh, none of them have actually fell yet, interestingly. The further you get the, the sort of the background changes colour as well. It's all totally random what's falling down though. You see, you reach a thousand, uh, <laughs> the colour of the screen has changed to blue. Oh, I now red because I've died. 
See, I've lost a lot of points. It's back down, <laughs> down to black again. Anyway, excellent game. Really like it. I, I certainly think I'll be playing this um, more. I think this is probably my favourite game. The the car. It's a close sort of call, but yeah, very cool game. Um, it's difficult not to enjoy this, to be honest, in some way. Okay guys, next up is Buzz Bombers. Kinda straightforward, obviously you, the bees are coming, you need to blast the bees with your cans of bee repellent. That's not a good thing, is it? <laughs> and it's fairly straightforward, there's nothing special about the, the controls here. It's pretty simple. So just destroy the bees and the honeycombs and enjoy. Pretty simple shoot em up, but it's, it's, it's quite good fun. Let's do it. Oh, I've paused the game. So the start button actually pauses the game rather than starting it. So you press A to, to begin. And we start at level 1, obviously. It's obviously it's some kind of repellent we've got here. And it kind of moves quite slowly. It's almost like a kind of a millipede centipede style game, I guess. That's probably what we're going for. But it, I say graphically, probably it's a lot better, arguably. Pretty addictive. Don't know what that thing is. It's kind of a like a bat or a, some other kind of dragonfly or something. Interesting. Come on. <laughs> Tricky to get that last one. There we go. That kind of defeats the first stage. And yeah, that's quite good. Maybe gets a little bit repetitive, but you know. It's it as what as it's pretty decent. It's fine. Okay, guys, here we go. Frog bog. Oh, now interesting. There is you can also use the L1 and R1 to open up the keypad, but it's pretty basic. You're really just moving the frog left and right and pulling out your tongue to catch the the flies, and that's really it. I think this one is probably better played with a friend two-player rather than on your own because I think on your own it's pretty dull so you've got the the frog I'm the, the, the sort of grey frog and you really need to jump left and right and try and collect the flies and that's really it honestly I'm I'm kind of thinking why would you have this one on here I mean it's really only beneficial if you're playing against a friend it's pretty dull otherwise um, Really not much else I can say about that. So just talking about the on-screen keypad, if you press the L1 you bring up your left keypad and you sort of use the D-pad to sort of move between the buttons uh, and obviously the uh, C is cancel and E is the enter key but don't really need to use it at the moment. You can bring up the the right one by pressing the other, the right R1 button. But that's it honestly guys, that is, this game is as, as exciting as it looks, which is not very. I don't get this one at all. <laughs> yeah, that's a pass for me. Okay, so here we have Night Stalker, which is kind of the, the iconic Night Stalker uh, logo that you probably see on in television um, Amico these days, if you know what that is. Um, so you are trapped in a maze with no exit and the robots are coming from you, so you basically need to grab the gun, Shoot the robot and then just avoid the other sort of animals about and that's really about it and survive as long as you can. Simple controls, you can see there the, the sub buttons are fire up, down, left and right and that's it, move your man, the man. And that's it, so let's play it. I mean sometimes these games are quite good, quite simple, you don't really think too much and just kind of jump in and that, that might be one of the, the, the cool things about this game, or this cart even, maybe similar to the Atari collection. Oh, oh, I got the robot, but he got me. Um, yeah, you can maybe jump in and enjoy it just for a brief spell. And sometimes that's what I like, especially on the handheld. I think this will probably be probably even better on the handheld rather than on the VS. So the bats just slow you down, um, as do the spiders. Um, I think it's only the robot you really need to destroy, and that shoots back at you. But it's it's pretty brutal. Let's see. Ah. Oh. <laughs> he keeps getting me at the same time. How annoying. That's basically it, to be honest. It's, that's as complicated as it gets. 
Oh, darn. So the, the little man sometimes a bit sort of stiff and moving. Oh dear, my dirty mind just played tricks on me there. Okay, let's see if I can do this without actually dying. Oh, I don't know where to go, I know where to go! <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, it's actually alright, it's just very, very limited. Um, it's just funny, I just keep playing, I think I've got one life left now. Let's see if I can kill the robot without actually dying myself. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh, you can use the gun to defeat the bats as well. Come on, Mr. Robot. Oh, right, I need to stand here something. Yay! I'm still alive. Oh, I need the gun. Where's the gun? Need to just try and escape. Go in here for a rest. As it says in the manual. Anyway, not too bad guys, it's okay. Quite limited, but it's not bad. Okay, here we have Pinball. That's quite cool. We see we have quite a few pinball games on the, the Evercade, which is interesting. I guess the guys at Blaze like their pinball. So yeah, it's pinball. Um interestingly the controls here, which I noticed are weird. You know, why would you not have these controls sort of to the, the sort of shoulder buttons? That would have made sense. Um, I'll, I'll check in game, see if there's any other layout options. You can see A and B is, uh, a is the left flapper and B is the right flapper. Or do they both flipper? Do you just be pressing X? So maybe they just do that. Probably the only thing to do. Well, let's jump in. It's a two player game. Hmm. Interesting. So this is one of the ones you need to choose a player, so bring up your keypad pressing the L1 button and choose 1 and then press the E button to enter um, and that's you. So yeah, I'm just pressing X to do both of them. Um, oh yeah, pull down in the D-pad to release the ball and let go and then that's it. So. <laughs> Good start. I don't really feel like you have a lot of control over this this particular one. Yeah. Hmm. I'd say the the pinball game on the Codemaster Collection is probably better than this. Yeah. It just feels a little bit limited. I, I feel as if there's very little control over this. It's not bad, but hmm. There's definitely better pinball games on the other kid. And it looks nice enough, I mean, for that in television game, it actually looks okay. Because feel as if there's no control over that at all. You can see in the top sort of left-hand corner here, I guess that's how many balls I've got, or... I am done! Yeah, let's move on, I didn't really like that, to be honest. So guys, here we have the homebrew game, Princess Quest, which was from 2014. Um, really glad they've got um, this on the cart. Hopefully we might even see some more on the Intellivision Collection 2, which we know will happen at some point next year. I think we just need to... I think they're obviously testing what games they can put on here and how much games are going to give them the least amount of work, I guess, and try to map the controls. Well, let's have a look at this. So it's kind of like a Ghouls and Goblins style game. Um, you're the brave knight and you need to sort of fight through the levels and your quest to make things right and fight off every vicious monster on your way. Let's see the control, pretty simple, fire and jump. I say this is probably my second favourite game on the cart, it's pretty good, it really is um, decent in it. For a in television game it definitely looks nice. Something that's probably tough to play some of these games that they don't age too well. That you sort of put that to the side and enjoy the, the gameplay. It's actually pretty good. The Evil King. <laughs> Let's get going. Princess Quest. I'll just press the A button rather than start. Okay, so X button to fire your um, bolts or whatever they are, I don't know. Arrows. And then A button to jump. Looks nice, nice and colourful. Get the treasure. The, the, the enemies just seem to keep spawning all the time. See, so you've got your hit points in the, the top corner there. Only got two, but you get if you sort of kill the enemies, they drop hearts, so you can um, hopefully replenish that hit points. Oh, I'm gonna die! I'm gonna die! 
pretty hard though. I mean, it's it's good fun. I mean, it definitely has that ghouls and goblins style. I'm going to die constantly um, type thing, but it's still good. And at least uh, you don't have to go back to the start when you actually die, which is, is great in my book always. Something made just the best to run through the, the level and do your best. <laughs> ah! Just don't take hit fall damage, that's good. There's a heart that can replenish some of my hit points. Oops. Definitely like this game. Um, it's fantastic. Massive bonus for it, please, for getting this on the cart. Absolutely fantastic. I think this this will probably surprise a few people with this card. I mean, it doesn't look the greatest, but there's some games that are actually good fun to play. It's definitely surprising me so far. I mean, I never had an Intellivision. We were Atari 2600 folks, and um, we also loved that. But I'd say this is probably even like a step up from Atari. Obviously a big massive competitor back in the late 70s and early 80s. But yeah. Very nice. Ooh. Oh, I've got double ro uh, double arrows now, cool. <laughs> it's not going stuck on the, the ladders, you seem to climb them no problem, it's fine, doesn't have any issue. Very nice, oh, this is great. If you like your platformers, which I do absolutely love platformer games, this is really good fun to play. Oh, here we get the end of level guy. No oh, guy, it's actually a pig if I recall. Yeah, it's like Peppa Pig attacking you. <laughs> so I think there's only a certain part you can actually hit. Um, it's like the head I think. Or you know, just keep hoping and hitting and hope for the best. <laughs> Ideally you want to avoid and go up got five but anyway it's actually quite quite hard not to get hit just wait, that's probably the best strategy or not just stand still and just keep hitting the arrows <laughs> that's also a strategy Yay. definitely like this game guys it's it's absolutely fantastic, really good. Really, really good. Nice colour change in the level here, and sort of different enemies as well, that's nice. Terrific. Wow. I'll maybe actually have to change my mind about the, my favourite game in the cartridge, it might be this one, and not Astro Smash. There's probably more depth to this game. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, let's, let me save that on my saves. And let's move on guys, absolutely terrific. Okay guys, let's go back to some of the old classics. We've got Shark Shark, um, let's play that. So you're a big... So you're a, a small fish, you need to eat sort of fish your size and sort of grow and grow and avoid the deadly shark. That's basically what you play. Um, pretty simple. Let's play it. Okay, let's play shark shark. So again, hold the L1 or R1 button and choose your player numbers, which is 1 for me. And then press E to enter. And that's it, move your fish. Try and eat fish that are a wee bit. You're a similar size. Don't eat fish that are bigger than you, or you will die. They will eat you, obviously. Oh, there's a small fish. And avoid all the other fishies and the shark. Here we go. Do you think that one's the same size? Yeah. This is kind of fun. Obviously, quite basic, but it's actually kind of fun. I guess a playing two player game might be fun as well, playing this. If you're on the same screen, see who can get the biggest. Score the most points. Terrific. Oh, here we go. Anyway, pretty basic to be honest with you, but um, oh, surprisingly fun if you keep avoiding. Oh, 
or you get out with the shark. Okay, slap shot super pro hockey. Jeez, say that fast ten times. That is a that's a mouthful. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. It's a hockey game. Here's your sort of controls. Let's just play. Okay, so you need to utilise the on-screen keypad again. Just computer player. So home team, you want to be the home team. Let's say yes, I do. And press enter, so you press the e button to it. Select the player handicap level. Oh, I don't know. Just one. Okay, let's get to it. So, as you can see, the graphics are pretty basic. Um, I guess I'm probably the, the blue team to the right. Oh, good save goal here. That's, yeah, it's kind of dark. So I need to change the player by pressing the the Y button. See, I'm now the yellow guy. Oh, they just scored. I have to be honest, this is really difficult to actually control and understand where you are. Absolutely. It's not, it's not NHL hockey, that's for sure. Okay, I think I've got the, the, the pocky. Okay, I think I've got the, the pocky puck. Let me shoot. <laughs> Honestly, not got a clue. It's, it's definitely tricky to control. Something it's difficult to know what what man you are. Yeah, I think all the color variations are quite tricky. Oh, I nearly scored. Ah, it's not bad. I think a lot of practice is definitely needed here. Definitely, but it's, it's definitely a tricky game to play. I wouldn't say it was my favourite game here. Okay, guys, here we have Snafu. It's kind of like a snake game, I think that's the best way to describe it. There's four sort of components at the same time, and you need to basically last the longest. So, yeah, if you've played Snake before, you'll understand it. Kind of strange why this isn't a four player game, because there's four on screen, but only two players can play. Interesting. Okay, so again, you need to utilize your on screen keypad. Select game, I don't know. Let's just select one. I have no idea what is what. Check the manual, he said. Let's have three rounds. So I'm the blue um, snake, so to speak. And basically, you just need to last the longest and trap the others if you possibly can. So the red one's gone. Um, I'm the blue one. Sometimes it is difficult. I'm sure I've started the game that's been the red one. I've not been clear. You can take a while and you crash instantly because you don't know what snake you are. Ooh. Just between me and yellow guy, I should really should outlast them, surely. Oh, I didn't time the D button. Sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit difficult to press the D button at the right time. Or the D-pad, sorry. Let's try and trap this guy. Oh, oops. I'm going to trap myself, I think, here. <laughs> the red one's gone. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, to be honest. But, like, see, how how is this not a four-player game? It just it's screaming to be a four-player game. Okay. This looks good. I'm going to... Yes, I'm going to get rid of the red guy now. Yellow is completely within itself. All I just need to do is stay alive for a few seconds more. Yay! Made a funny shape. <laughs> of course, that's not bad. Not bad. Pretty limited, but it's not bad at all. Okay, guys. Thin ice. Let's have a bash at that. So, pretty... Straightforward, you're a, a penguin and you love to skate on thin ice. You basically need to skate around all your friends and basically give them a cold bath. He's not the nicest guy, is he? He's basically dunking all his friends into the water. Um, but watch out for the polar bear because he's a bit of a pain as well. Let's go. This game's a two player game too, which, you know, you think this could have been a four player as well. Okay, let's take these guys out. It's not as easy as it looks. Sometimes I've actually been good at it and something not, so that's um, one of the guys done. So as soon as you 
get rid of all your friends or dunk them all, and um, that's you. Oh dear. Yay, get rid of the, the seal as well. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, he's back. Okay, one more to go. This is actually quite good fun, to be honest. Kind of looks kind of silly and basic, but it's actually quite good fun. And it's, it's trickier than it looks, to be honest, but yeah, it ain't bad at all. Okay, here we go, it's Thunder Castle. This one is pretty good too. So you're a brave knight and you need to defeat the 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 dragon, the demon. And it, it's pretty... Um, it's probably not so straightforward what you're actually supposed to do. Obviously you need to defeat the dragon, but there's a way of doing it. So, I need to pick the players. So you can only defeat the dragon once you've actually been touched by the... I think it's a bat, and then you've got the power then to defeat the dragon. So until you've got that, you really just need to avoid the dragon. Or the demon, whatever it is. And there are power-ups here and there. So keep an eye out in the power-ups and see once I touch one of these bats, I'll have the power to defeat the, the dragon. Ah, I get trapped. I'm trapped! No. Okay, let's see if we can get this bat and get the power. Yay, so now I've got the power. I need to try and hurry up. I'm not going to do it and defeat the dragon. Now some see there's some power-ups happen as well that give you some kind of powers. I don't know what this goblet does. It just gives you extra points. Oh, there we go. Come on, open up, open up, open up. Ah, sometimes these open up at the wrong time and then shut at the wrong time. Kind of annoying. Let's see if we can get this one now. Come on. At least I'm staying alive, that's the, the good thing. Oh, come down this way, come, come, come. Ooh, the evil dragon, he's going to get me. Come this way back, come on. They all seem to go away from you, which is annoying. Right, I'm going to make it lucky this time. Hey. If it doesn't last long, it's maybe about 10 seconds you have that power and you need to sort of try and catch up and defeat the dragon in that time. Well, let's see if we can do it. Ah! That was so close. Kinda of frustrating, you definitely need to be at the same place at the, the right time and get lucky. Come on. Oh, he's such a scared the cat. There we go. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on, that's so unfair. <laughs> See, it's not easy. Sometimes you might get lucky, it's just about timing it right. To be honest, this game isn't bad at all. It really is okay, it's fun. Probably kind of limited. Um, but it's not bad. It's okay. I like the idea of it. But yeah, I've definitely timed that bad. Yay! Come on! Yay, I got the dragon. Big pile of goo now. And then we get another one. Yay. Okay guys, so the last game is a bit of a strange inclusion for me. Learning Fun 2, Word Rockets, which um, Word Rockets was part of a package called uh, from the pack called Learning Fun 2, which I don't know, it's a kind of a learning game, but it's, it's really for kids. I don't really know why it would be on here. Um, I suppose you could probably play with your, your kids with this, I, th I think it's a, a two-player game. So basically letters are falling from this, going over the sky and you need to replace it and make a word out with, with one of the letters at the bottom. Yeah. Interesting inclusion. I, I definitely would love to ask the question, why? So yeah, you could say you've got... Yeah, I was a bit slow there, so... Oh, too slow again. So 
that a word? <laughs> nope, so it'll bounce back if it's not actually a word. Um, well, this is something I've got plenty of. So you pick the make a word, get some points, and obviously, really, you need to be fighting against a human opponent here. That's probably what this game is all about. But at the same time, really, it's a silly game. I don't know. I don't see why you would want this here. I might have fun with my, my sort of youngest son. This might be something I could play with him. And, and I think he would probably enjoy it. But for an adult to sort of enjoy this on its own, it's just not going to happen. I mean, obviously if you can't spell, this game is really going to be a nightmare for you. Anyway, so I don't think we need to play this one anymore. Strange. So guys, that's that. The 12 games have all been played and, you know, I'm actually quite surprised. I definitely like a few of these games. Um, I, I, I'm surprised. I mean, there's some really good ones. Princess Quest is fantastic. Astro Smash is brilliant. Um, other ones are kind of okay and there's some kind of not good like Frog Bog and... The pinball game isn't particularly great and obviously Word Rockets, but there's some playability to be had here. I think this will probably pleasantly surprise a lot of people. It's definitely aiming at the market of those probably in North America that um, obviously had in televisions grown up and it was more mainstream than um, in the UK, for example, um, where we're more Atari. But I think it, the people in the UK or Europe will definitely be interested if you've never played it before and what you've missed out on. So... I certainly recommend it if you want to try it and have a look. Some of the games here are definitely fantastic. Um, guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.